Thank you, Lord, for all you have.
same mind Jesus releases. Amen. This is a message of hope and encouragement. Amen. Uh, because we find in this lesson that a woman has been violent for 18 years. That's a long time. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. If you look at the verses, there are several words that begin with the alphabet S. Jesus is in the synagogue. Are you there in the Bible? On the Sabbath. There's a woman with a spirit of infirmity. Did you see it? Jesus heals her and she stands up straight. Did you see it? It's in the Bible. But then you meet a self righteous ruler of the synagogue who was upset that she was healed on the Sabbath day. All the self righteous folk raise your hand. <laughs> Persons uh, that just jump off the pages of the text. One is uh, this woman was bowed and, and couldn't lift herself up. So the first question is how did she make it to the synagogue? Are y'all in the house today? <coughs> Anybody think about that? She, she really couldn't see where, where she was going. How did she make it to the synagogue? Uh, number two, why was she at the synagogue? Hmm. The third question would be, what, what is a spirit of infirmity? The last question is, do you know somebody, someone who's been bound by something or someone for 18 years? Less than 18 years. And by bound, I mean they keep doing the same thing over and over again. What they're doing is not right. <laughs> Maybe they're Christian, but some kind of way they can't shake this thing. God sent me to share with you something that we like to talk about. But the fact is, this woman. Bound because of Satan. And he wanted me to teach this message because some people in here are still doing the same things you did uh, when you first got saved. And there's a reason for it. You need to hear me. It's because Satan has you bound to that thing or to someone. While you die, are loose. Young man, young woman, you are loose. Amen. God has the answer. There's a, there's a person here in the scripture, and they have a name. Thank God for that. <laughs> and she has a problem. I wish y'all would help me teach this. But Jesus has the prescription for her problem. If you read Job chapter 2, verse 7, now that's you will find that Satan has left the presence of God and he goes to Job and he smites Job with boils from the sole of his foot to the crown of his head. That all bother you because what it says is Satan called. Job to have those boys. This is important. Somebody in here is messed up because Satan has caused you to be in that condition. 
And like we talk about this, the issue is Satan has the power to bind you to something or someone. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. I was reading, I was reading, I was reading, and, and you don't want to read this book probably because it's scary, but it's written by C.S. Lewis and it's called The Screw Tape Letters. And, and it's a parallel to this story because in this story, it's written by Christian. It's about a devil named Screw Tape. And he's a senior dean. And Screw Tape is training his nephew Wormwood, who's a junior dean. A junior dean. And so Screw Tape has Wormwood on the train. He is mentoring Wormwood and training him how to cause a young Christian who's called patient <coughs> to mess up and lose out and be handed over to, to the devil. I kept reading that thing. I don't want to read the whole book. But as I read it, it related to this lesson today because screw tape at some point Tells Wormwood, he said, you know, it's funny how mortals, how people always think that we cause them to do things, that we put things in their minds. Are y'all still with me? We, 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 we put things in their mind. They think that we put things in their mind. But he said, in reality, our best is keeping things out. Our best work is keeping things out of the minds of Christians. There's a parallel here. And one more thing he said in the letter. He said, uh, our policy is to conceal ourselves. How does that relate to this story? I'm almost through. Almost done. I'm convinced this woman was bound because Satan kept some things out of her mind. Here she is in the synagogue where the word of God is taught. Amen. <coughs> Yet she's still bound. Y'all gonna get this out of a while. <laughs> It's possible for you to sit up in your 18 years with a demon riding your back and still be bound. Even though the word is being proclaimed because Satan has a way to keep things out of your mind and out of your heart. It's very possible this woman had been going to the synagogue at least for 18 years. Here's another thing. How in the world did she get there? Some of y'all ought to be ashamed. She could not have seen. Because she was bowed down. Almost to the ground. But some kind of way. She made her way to church. Y'all help me. Sometimes you get a little headache and you stay home. But, but this woman who had an infirmity 18 years made her way to church every Sunday. Can I get a y'all? I have to say, I'm gonna preach this somewhere else. Y'all That's good. Yeah. And she apparently went there to hear the word of God. Yes, but it had not impacted her in the right way. I just believe that Satan kept the word out of her mind. Yeah. Why? Because I read the other day in Exodus chapter 15 that. And the, and the priest probably taught it in, in Exodus chapter 15, verse 26. You'll see where, where God turned bitter water to sweet water. <laughs> and then he said, I am the Lord that healeth thee. I'm just wondering, did the woman ever hear that word? 
in the synagogue. The priest knew the whole text. I think that may have been preached at some point in the synagogue, but she didn't receive it because Satan kept it from her. Here's another point real quick before I lose you. Satan also conceals himself. This woman didn't know what it was that had her bound. Not until Jesus revealed it and said this woman has been bound 18 years by Satan. It's in your Bible. It's by verse 17. Amen. I'm helping somebody. You got a hump on your back. You can't get rid of it because Satan has hid the word of God from you. Plus, he has concealed the reason for the hump on your back. Why are you still cussing? Why are you still backbiting? Satan is keeping the word from you, and he has concealed the reason why you're in that condition. Lord have mercy. I just believe God meant what he said when he said, I am the Lord. <laughs> That healeth thee. Yes, yes. Amen. Amen. I wish she had received that word. <laughs> I'm coming to a close. What did Jesus do? The Bible said he was engaged in a ministry of compassion. And if this church is to be the difference that makes a difference, we got to be involved in a ministry of compassion. Amen. 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 Some school lesson told you. Amen. We need to be compassionate. Amen. What did Jesus do? Look in your Bible. The Bible says he saw her. <laughs> when you have compassion, you can see need. I'm up here all by myself. No one has to tell you they need something. A lot of times you can see need. Amen. This scripture too plain. He, he saw her. Mm. And then he called her to him. I'm trying to reach somebody today. God is saying if you're bound by a spirit of infirmity, he says I see you. I see your condition. I know what it is. Come to me. When my mama wanted me to, she said, Sonny, come here. Boy, I got to step in because she meant business. She needed me to do something. God wants to do something for you, and not only does he see your situation, but he's calling you to himself. The third thing he did was he spoke to her. Y'all don't like this kind of preaching. <laughs> Look at Jesus. Ministry of compassion. He, he saw the need. He called the woman to himself. And then he spoke to her. Compassion means you see it. You recognize it. You speak to it. And then you do something about it. I'm up here by myself. How are you going to make a difference if you just see something, talk about it, and do nothing about it? Ain't no compassion in it. He sees her, he calls her, he, he speaks to her. Here's the key to the message. You're going to miss this. How do you get release? First, he said, Woman, thou art loosed. What did Jesus do first? He spoke to who she would become in just a few minutes. <laughs> Compassion doesn't look at people the way they are. I'm going to preach this again somewhere else. But compassion sees people the way they can become. They may be naked now, but if you go to your closet and take out some of those clothes that you can't wear, you only die trying to keep that. You ain't going to get. You might well give those clothes to somebody that's naked, and then you can be the difference that makes a difference. 
He said, woman, and, and you got to get this. This is amazing. Here's a woman that didn't ask Jesus for anything. He didn't ask her for nothing. He, she didn't explain her situation to Jesus. And then Jesus didn't ask her, do you have faith <laughs> that I can make you whole? Y'all need to understand Jesus. Don't try to block him in. Like you know what he's going to do in every situation. Thank God that some of y'all got saved and you didn't have any faith at all until Jesus knocked you down off of your high horses and let you see you can make it by yourself. If it had not been for the grace of God, why would you be the man? You didn't have no faith at all. You were happy doing what you were doing and didn't want nobody to tell you anything different. This woman didn't ask for anything. I like Jesus. I love Jesus. Sometimes you don't have to ask him for nothing. Sometimes you don't have to tell him anything. Because he knows everything about you in the first place. It was Jesus who said, you've been in this condition for 18 years. I knew about it all along. That's why I came to set you free. When he said woman, you need to get this, this is deep. He wasn't really talking to the woman. He was talking to the devil. That was in the woman. He had had her mind. How can you get released? You got the first deal with the demon that's got the hump on your back. And you can't deal with that demon by yourself. It's only Jesus that can speak to a devil. And I'm glad he didn't even have to call him by name. Didn't have to identify him at all. He just said, time out. Pack up your bags. Get out. Woman.
she was able to stand up straight. She didn't get on the phone and call the sister girls and say, look what happened to me. The Bible says she glorified God. I wonder what she told him. If it hadn't been me, I would have said, thank you. that way. Some politicians are that way. 
very little compassion in the world today. This man was upset <laughs> because somebody got healed on the Sabbath day. Jesus really said, that rule not even in the law. That's one you made up. So how am I going to be bound to something that you did? I'm God all by myself. I'm the Lord of the Sabbath. I created the Sabbath. And I created the truth. You can't tell me what to do. Can I do it? Here's what happens when you have compassion. I'm done. The scripture says that the adversaries became ashamed when they saw the compassion. I want to challenge you. You want to make people mad? Do it in the right way. Have compassion. Have compassion and shame the devil. They don't want you to help them. But when you have compassion, the adversary, the enemy, became a shame. But the Bible said the common people rejoiced. <laughs> That's when you know you're the difference that makes a difference. When the enemy gets mad and the people who need help rejoice. Are we going to be the difference that makes a difference? I pray that we will. Girls, the church are open. Jesus died on Calvary for your sins. Shed his blood. He died from the sixth to the ninth hour. Allow them to crucify him. Locked his head in his shoulders and gave up the ghost. He said, It is finished. This same Jesus didn't stay dead, but he got up on the third day with all power on his head. Because he has all power, just like he raised up this woman. He didn't have a name from her in front of him. He can raise you up too. If something or someone has you bound, the invitation says, Jesus sees you and he knows what you're going through. And right now, he's calling you to himself. And he wants to speak to you. Listen to him. Because he's the only one that can release the spirit of infirmity. Your life. He's the only one that can remove the de demonic influence. The devil is training up an imp right now to keep you from being successful. And that imp has a bead on you, trying to keep you from being all that God has purposed in your life. The word has declared that you are free. You are released. If you just accept Jesus. And I like the fact that Jesus is not going to require you to say a whole lot. Your comment will be testimony enough that you have accepted Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Amen. Would you come? You can come with a letter from another church. Come on the basis of your Christian experience without a letter. Yes, yes. If you accept in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you can come. Confess Him as Lord and Savior. And we'll baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Is your